एवरीवन दिस इज बबीता वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ए सी इन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एरोनोटिकल इंजीनियरिंग इन दिस सेशन आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट प्रॉब्लम रिलेटेड टू दपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर इंटीग्रेटर सर सो बिफोर गोइंग टू द प्रॉब्लम रिलेटेड टू दिस जस्ट आई रिवाइज द वट इज मीन बाई इंटीग्रेटर एंड वट इज मीन बाई अप एम इंटीग्रेटर एंड वाई वी आर मूविंग फॉर द प्रैक्टिकल इंटीग्रेटर सर्क्यूट so generally this uh, particular integrator circuit to be can designed with the resistor and capacitor elements those are the passive elements that is nothing but one resistor in parallel with the capacitor is acts like a integrator circuit by using passive elements so for this circuit if i provide the input signal across the output i'll get the integral of 1 by rc integral of v in dt here so the, here rc indicates the time constant of the circuit so the time constant of the circuit is depending upon the how much amount of resistance as well as capacitance we are utilizing to design this particular circuit so uh, well and good it is providing the integration by using the passive elements so this same circuit we can also implement by using the operational amplifier here so that if we implement using operational amplifier so that we can call it as the operational amplifier integrator circuit so in order to design that i am constraining one amp amp with the inverting and non inverting terminals here non inverting terminal is grounded for the inverting terminal we are giving the resistance and feedback the feedback signal through the capacitor we are giving back to the input here from the output this is output this is input so this output signal some part of the output signal through this capacitance cf i am giving back to the operational amplifier as the inverting input here so the output of this particular integrator it is the ideal integrator actually so the output is minus 1 by r1 cf times the integral of v of dt here so this r1 cf indicates the time constant of this particular circuit here okay so Uh, the ideal in the ideal case most of the times so we will take r of c1 value as the one only so that it can able to integrate the signal with very large time constant the basic advantage of this ideal integrator is it will take large time constant to integrate the applied input signal so uh, the basic uh, drawback of this ideal integrator circuit here it is even though we are not at all providing any input signal for this circuit because of the input offset voltage vios as well as input bias current ib both are applied as the input for the circuit and those will amplify and appear across the output so whatever the signals which are uh, coming here input offset voltage as well as bias current those are taking as the inputs and it will amplify and integrate that particular signals here so because of that we will get the error in output signal okay by because the here we are not at all providing any any input signal even though because of this uh, biasing effect as well as the uh, offset voltage effects it is providing the signal so that's why in the output we will get it as error here so in order to overcome this in order to uh, nullify this particular error we are moving for the practical integrator circuit so in the case of practical integrator circuit again we need to take the ideal one first okay the same ideal one i am taking here cf r1 so some extra element i am adding here that is one feedback resistance or if i am adding in the practical integrator circuit in order to overcome the problem of passing effect so here we will provide the input we'll take the output here and along with this 
we will also add the R compensation resistance in the practical integrator. This is the ideal integrator circuit and this one is the practical integrator circuit. Okay. And here we need to provide the plus 12 volts and here it is minus 12 volts and here also plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts it is the 741 operational amplifier. So when we are designing this integrator circuit by using the operational amplifier so that we can call it as the active integrator circuit why because the active element op amp we are using along with the passive elements resistor and capacitor here so that's why it is called as uh, active ideal integrator active practical integrator circuit in most of the cases while solving the problems we will utilize this practical circuit only not the ideal So next we will move the problems related to the practical integrator circuit. In that uh, first one is find R1 and RF in the Lassie integrator so that the peak gain is 40 dB and the gain is 3 dB down from its peak occurs at a frequency of 1.25 kHz. Use a capacitance of 0 0.01 microfarads. That is nothing but we have to find the or we have to design the integrator circuit from the given parameters here. So the given parameters are here. The gain, the DC gain value is given. P gain is nothing but DC gain here, that is 40 dB. Okay, and this 40 dB gain is reducing by 3 dB when it is reducing by 3 dB is whenever frequency is at 1.25 kilohertz whenever the input signal frequency is at 1.25 kilohertz the gain is reducing by 3 dB that is nothing but now the gain DC gain is 37 dB is 40 minus 3, okay, 3 dB here. Okay, and the given frequency is 1.25 kilohertz, and the capacitance value given as 0 0.01 microfarads. So these are the values given in the problem. By using this frequency and capacitance, we can able to design the lossy integrator here. So for that. I am taking first, I am considering the peak gain value given in the problem. The peak gain is the DC gain of the integrator. DC gain, um, which is, we can write it as 20 log RF by R1. This is the formula for DC gain. So that is given in the problem as 40 dB. But actually RF by R1 is the DC gain. But in the problem they have given it as decibels. So that's why we have taken here it as 20 log RF by R1. So here I am taking log RF by R1 is equal to 2 here. And RF by R1 is 100. So this one I am taking it as my first equation. And this is the DC gain here. Okay. So here at uh, frequency 1.25 kilohertz, we are in the problem only. At frequency 1.25 kilohertz, the gain is reduced by 3 dB from its peak value. Peak DC value, we can see. Peak value 40 D. So that is nothing but so at F equal to 1.25 kilohertz. 1.25 kilohertz gain or DC gain is equal to 
40 minus 3 that is 37 D. So now we have to find the gain of the practical integrator circle. It is gain of practical integrator is 20 log rf by r1 divided by 1 plus f by fa whole square under root. So this is the gain of the practical integrator circuit. This is the formula and the value given it is 37 dB. In the problem itself, the given at frequency equal to 1.25 kilohertz, the gain value is 37 dB. So now, substitute the values of Rf by R1 as well as F here. Okay, substitute, sorry, substitute Rf by R1 and F values. So what we will get 20 log Rf by R1 value is 100 given in the we have already calculated from the first equation. 1 plus F value is 1.25 into 10 power 3 by F A whole square under is equal to 37. So I can write it as log 100 by 1 plus 1.25 into 10 power 3 divided by FA whole square under root is equal to 1 1.25 sorry 1.85 here it is this 20 I took I took it to right side so it is 1.85 here so now this log I am taking to the right side if I take this log to the right side I will get it as 100 by 1 plus 1.25 into 10 power 3 divided by FA whole square under root is equal to 70.794. So again I am writing it as 1 plus 1.25 into 10 power 3 by FA whole square under root this 100 also I am taking into right side so that it is 1.4125. So now I am removing this root for that I have to square this side both sides so that 1 plus 1.25 into 10 power 3 divided by FA whole square is equal to 0.99 sorry it is 1.9952 here. So if if I take this one to the right side, I'll get it as 1.25 into 10 power 3 divided by F A whole square is equal to 0.9952. So 1.25 into 10 power 3 divided by F A is equal to 0.9952. So from this I can write FA value as 1.253 kilo hertz. So the cutoff frequency of the lossy integrated integrator we have calculated FA here. So but FA value is or FA formula is in the integrator 2 pi RF CF. In the case of differentiator it was R1 CF. But in this case, it is 1 by 2 pi Rf Cf here. Okay. And the capacitance value given it as 0 0.01 microfarads. So by using this capacitance value as well as this Fa value, we can calculate the value of Rf here. Rf C1 here. Sorry, that's not. So that is 1.253 into 10 power 3 is equal to 1 by 
2 pi into Rf into C1 value is 0 0.01 microfarads. Okay. And from this I can write Rf as 1 by 1.253 into 10 power 3 into 2 pi into 0 0.01 into 10 power minus 6. So after simplification, RF value as 12.70 kilos. Okay. And from the first equation, that is RF by R1 equation. From first equation, we got RF by R1 equal to 100. So from this, I can write R1 equal to RF by 100. Okay. So, this RF value 12.70 12 kilo ohms or 12.70 into 10 power 3 by 100. So, from this I can write R1 value as 127. So, we have calculated the RF value as well as R1 value for the given lossy integrator circuit. So, in this way we, we need to find the R1 RF values for the given lossy integrator with the frequency with the given frequency range. So these are the desired values for the given problem here R1 and Rf values. So next uh, we will move with the second problem uh, that is design an op amp integrator that will integrate an input signal with f minimum of 100 Hatch. So, in order to design this particular circuit, first of all, we have to write the given parameters. So, here the given parameter only the f minimum value that is 100 hertz given. So, here input signal we have to take anything either sign signal, input is either sign, square, or step anything we can take here. So, in order to integrate any type of input signal, we have to design this practical integrator with the F minimum of 100 Hz. So, to design that, first of all, I am taking the cutoff frequency of the integrator, Fb. That value is 1 by 2 pi R1 Cf here. Okay. And I am choosing or I am considering R1 value as 0.59 kilo ohms. Okay, I am considering the resistance R1 as 0.59 kilo ohms. Why? Because they didn't give any element values of the integrator. We need to find all the values. So, to find the remaining values, I am assuming this particular value here. Okay, and Fp value is already given in the problem. Here, Fp is nothing but the F minimum value given that is 100 H. Okay. So now substitute that FP, FP value as well as R1 value in this FP equation to find the value of CF. That is FP is 100 Hz equal to 1 by 2 pi into R1. So R1 value we know already 0.59 into 10 power 3 into C. So, from this, I can write CF value as 1 by 2 pi into 100 into 0.59 into 10 power 3. So, after simplification, CF value will get as 2.69 into 10 power minus 6 farads. That is nothing but 2.69 micro farads. So, here we know the values of R1, Fp. And CF values. So next we require RF as well as C1 values also here. So to find that I am taking the next cutoff frequency that is FA here. The second cutoff frequency is FA in the integrator that is 1 by 2 by RF CF here. So and again here FA value should be Fp by 10 times. In the differentiator circuit, Fp value is 10 times Fa here. Okay. Well, because first cutoff frequency is Fa and second cutoff frequency is Fb in the case of differentiator. But 
in the case of integrator fb is the first cut off frequency and fa is the second cut off frequency in the integrator circuit so because of that reason i am taking fa equal to fb by 10 here so fb value is 100 hertz divided by 10 is 10 hertz okay and rf value we have to choose here it has 10 times the r1 value here so r1 value just now we have calculated sorry we have assumed the r1 value as 0.59 kilo ohms so 10 into 0.59 kilo ohms means we will get it as 5900 zero ohms that is nothing but approximately 5.9 kilo ohms so rf value is 5.9 kilo ohms or else from this relation fa relation also we can calculate this rf value we will see that so fa equal to 1 by 2 by rf cf fa value is 10 1 by 2 pi and rf value is sorry capacitance value is 2.69 into 10 power minus 6 we don't know the value of rf so rf from this is 1 by 2 pi into 10 into 2.69 into 10 power minus 6. So after simplification, the RF value we will get it as 5.9 kilo ohms. So it is similar to the previous one. See. If RF equal to 10 times R1 also we got it as 5.9 kilo ohms or else from the FA relation also we can calculate we got the same value. In these two ways we can calculate the feedback resistance value here. So with these values, we have to draw the practical integrator circuit with inverting terminal and non-inverting terminal and the resistance R and in the feedback, we are having the capacitor as well as the resistance R. This is CF, this is R1, here we are giving the input signal and this is R compensation resistance and along with this we can also take the load resistance R. So here indicate the values R1 equal to 0.59 kilo ohms, RF equal to 5.9 kilo ohms and CF equal to 2.69 microfarads and R compensation is almost equal to the R1 resistance here. Okay, there is nothing but 0.59 kilo ohms and along with this plus 12 ohms as well as minus 12 ohms in order to run this particular IC. So this is the practical integrator in order to integrate the F minimum of 100 hertz input signal. So this is the required circuit for the given problem here. Next we will move with the third problem that is design an op-amp integrator circuit with a DC gain of 10 to integrate a square wave of 10 kilohertz. So in the given problem they given it as the given values are DC gain that is nothing but rf by r1 value dc gain is nothing but rf by r1 that value is 10 here and they given the input signal as input signal as square wave and the frequency of that one is 10 kilohertz it is nothing but we have to design the practical op-amp integrator circuit to integrate this square wave of frequency 10 kilohertz. So to design that, first of all, I am considering the given DC gain, whatever given in the problem, that is A, DC gain is equal to RF by R1 here. So this is the DC gain of the practical integrator.
Okay. So this DC gain value given it as 10. Okay. RF by R1 here. And the input signal frequency also we have written that is 10 kilohertz. So now for proper integration. So to get proper integration. Integration always the applied input signal frequency must be greater than or equal to 10 times the cutoff frequency F A. Okay, so where here F A is nothing but break frequency of the integrator, break frequency of practical integrator circuit okay break frequency of the practical integrator circuit so f by f a is equal to 10 now so the gain is f by f, f a is equal to 10 also we can write so from this f a is equal to f by F value is given that is 10 kilohertz, 10 into 10 power 3 by 10, that is nothing but 1000 hertz. Okay, so now for the practical integrator circuit. Integrator circuit, FA equal to what? 1 by 2 by RFCF. Okay, so FA value we got it as 1000, 1 by 2 by RF value, CF value we don't know here. So to find this RF and CF, I am taking 1 by 2 by into 1000. So RF, CF value after simplification 1.5915 into 10 power minus so RFCF value we got here. So I am selecting the resistance R1 as or else I am choosing the resistance R1 value as 10 kilo ohms and once the R1 value is 10 kilo, ohm, 10 kilo ohms means I have already mentioned the feedback resistance is 10 times the input resistance R1 here. So, Rf equal to 10 times R1 here. That is nothing but 10 into 10 kilo ohms. That is nothing but 100 kilo ohms. So, the feedback resistance value is 100 kilo ohms and the R1 value is 10 kilo ohms. And next, from this, we can find the value of Cf here. So, Cf value. Sorry, from RFCF, from the previous slide, I am taking RFCF value that is 1.5915 1.5915 into 10 power minus 4. Okay, so this RF I am writing here. So now substitute the value of RF here 1.5915 into 10 power minus 4 divided by 100 kilo ohms. So, CF value after simplification, we will get it as 1.5915 into 10 power minus 9 facts. So, approximately I can write this CF value as 16 nano farads by because 10 power minus 9 is there. And next, R compensation value. R compensation value is R1 parallel with RF here. So, the R1 value is 10 here and the RF value is 100. Both are in kilo ohms divided by 10 plus 100 that is 9.09 .09 kilo ohms. R compensation value is 9.09 .09 kilo ohms. I'm sorry, these all are in kilo ohms that is 10 into 10 power 3 into 100 into 10 power 3 divided by 10 into 10 power 3 plus 100 into 10 power 3. So our compensation value, we got this much. So now we got all the values here. So next, 
we need to draw the practical integrated circuit to differentiate sorry to integrate the applied circuit so for that i'm taking the operational amplifier with the inverting terminal and the non inverting terminal in the non inverting sorry for the non inverting terminal our compensation resistor is connected and here we'll measure the output voltage and for the inverting terminal one resistance r1 is connected and here we will apply the input signal and in the feedback feedback we are having one feedback sorry feedback capacitance and one feedback resistance r so now we will write our calculated values r1 value it is 10 kilo ohms and rf value is 100 kilo ohms cf value is 16 nanofarads we have calculated and r compensation value is 9.09 kilo ohms so along with this here we need to apply plus 12 volts minus 12 volts to run this 741 operational amplifier okay so this is the uh, practical integrator circuit to integrate the given square wave signal so here uh, the value we can write it as minus 1 by r1 c of integral of v in d so here the limits are depending upon the how much of frequency signal we are taking how much range of time period we are providing for the input signal so for the given problem in this way we need to draw the practical integrator circuit here so for uh, any designing of any practical integrated circuit first we first of all we have to take the first cut off frequency fp and uh, from the given gain value we have to find the fp value and the related resistance value and next we have to take the second cut off frequency fp that is fp by 10 times from that we will get the fa value and next we have to take the formula of fa then we need to find the feedback resistance as well as feedback capacitance values and after that uh, from the relation rf cf we can find the feedback capacitance value then after that we need to find the r compensation resistance uh, that is the parallel combination of r1 and r so after finding all the values we need to draw the practical integrator in this way and we need to substitute all the calculated values so next uh, we we'll move with the next problem that is in the circuit shown in figure a r1 cf equal to 1 second and the input is a step dc voltage as shown in figure b determine the output voltage and sketch it assume that op amp is initially nulled that is nothing but initially we are not providing any voltage here yes in the circuit shown in the figure a so the figure is i'm showing here given in the problem it is minus plus here it is b no i'm for the non inverting terminal is grounded and for the inverting terminal one resistor is connected and also the feedback capacitor cf v in r1 cf 741 ic plus vcc minus d and this is the load resistance v not equal to minus 1 by rf cf integral of 0 to t v in of d so this is the circuit given in the problem itself and along with the with this circuit the given input signal as with the step kv in with the step amplitude of 2 ohms it is varying with respect to t so this is figure a and this is figure b these two are given in the problem itself so now we have to determine the output voltage for this given step signal and we have to draw the output signal how much we are getting for this
so here i'm taking the input function is constant okay the input function is a constant signal that is the step uh, step signal constantly it is varying with the two volt uh, two volts amplitude with the time period t equal to 0 seconds okay so that's why i'm writing the input function the input function is constant and it is beginning beginning at t equal to 0 seconds it is beginning at t equal to 0 seconds that is we can write it as v in equal to 2 ohms at what range means for 0 to 4 range from 0 to 4 range it is making the amplitude as 2 ohms so the output voltage from the output of the practical integrator I can write it as V0 equal to minus 1 by RF CF integral of V in D. Okay, so this one I am taking it as the first equation. So in this particular case, for, from the given problem, I am writing my output voltage as V0 equal to minus integral of 0 to T equal to 4 to D. So, here RFCF value, we are taking here it as 1. Why? Because in the problem, they didn't mention the values of this. So, that's why we are taking the time constant value as the ideal integrator value. So, that's why it has minus integral of 0 to 4 to dt here. So, after applying the integration, the output voltage V0, we will get it as I am splitting this integration into 4 times. That is minus of integral. 0 to 1, 2dt plus 1 to 2, 2dt plus 2 to 3, 2dt plus 3 to 4, 2dt. Okay. After applying the integration, we will get it as minus of first integral is 2, for the second integral also 2, and for the third integral 2, and for the fourth integral also so this is minus 8 ohms the output voltage is minus 8 ohms here so the output voltage waveform is the ramp signal here why because in the integrator when we provide the step as the input signal we will get the output as the ramp signal so that's why the output signal is the ramp signal ramp signal with slope of minus h. Okay. It is a negative slope. Why? Because it is an inverting integrator circuit. We are providing the input for the inverting terminal of the operational. So now the slope of this ramp, okay, the slope of this uh, output ramp signal is minus 2 ohms. So, the output old, the constant output applied across the, uh, sorry, if we apply the step, uh, step input to the integrator circuit, we will get the ramp signal as the output here. So, the output signal I am drawing here. So, before drawing to that, first of all, I am taking the given input signal, 2 volts, V in, with respect to T. So, for this one, I am getting the output as so here 1, 2, 3, 4 till 4 I am taking the time V0 and the slope is minus 2, minus 4, minus 6 and minus 8. So the signal we will get with minus 8 slope. So this is the output signal with slope equal to minus 8 ohms here. So the slope of minus 8 here. 
So uh, here we have already seen that in the integrator circuit, whenever we are applying the whenever we are applying the step signal, we will get the output as the RAM signal. And whenever we are getting we are applying the square wave as the input, we will get the output as the triangular wave signal. And whenever if we apply the input as the sinusoidal signal, we will get the output as the cosine sinusoidal signal in the case of integrator circuit. So in this way, in the case of integrator circuit, we can able to find the integration of any input wave. So in this session, we discussed the problems related to the practical integrator circuit, uh, and also uh, we discussed why we are moving for the practical integrator and what are the problems related to the ideal integrator. So in this case also, we are having uh, two different types of problems. One thing is we need to find the elements of the integrator that is different resistances and capacitances by using the given gain of gain in the problem. That is one kind of problem. And next thing is we need to design the overall practical integrator circuit from the given input signal frequency. So in that case, we have to assume some elements of the integrator, then we need to find the remaining elements of the integrator. So in this way, we have to solve any kind of problems in the case of practical integrator circuit. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.